Welcome to ZigmaTech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for agricultural science. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. The exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post-UTME, WIEC, GCE, KCPE, IGMB, JPED, Cowbell Pedia, BECE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention a few. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class? Okay, let's get started. Some activities on the farm require specific tools and equipment. The tool used depends on the nature of the farm work, ranging from tilling, planting, harvesting, to certain or fixing certain farm machines and also to carry out certain farm animal management procedures. In this lesson, we will identify the various simple farm tools used in the farm and their uses. So our topic for today is simple farm tools, uses and maintainers. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to state the meaning of simple farm tools, state types of farm tools and identify them, identify the various accessory tools and their uses, and finally you should highlight the general maintenance of simple farm tools. So let's start with the meaning of simple farm tools. So what are simple farm tools? These are simple, from the word, simple, handy tools used mainly by peasant farmers, which are actually small-scale farmers, designed to help the hands to apply some form of force in farm operations. Now let's look at the types of simple farm tools. Now these types of simple farm tools can be grouped into various categories and we have what is called the garden tools and under the garden tools we have the cutting tools which include the cutlers, the secretoires or the sickle or the go to hell to mention a few. We also have the digging tools which is also a garden tool. We have the spade, the shovel, the pickaxe, the hand fork, etc. And we also have the carrying tools which are used for carrying items on the farm. We have the watering can and the wheelbarrow. Still on the groups of simple farm tools, we have what is called harvesting tools. These are used for harvesting. We have what is called go to hell. We have the sickle. We have the harvesting knife to carry out harvesting. We have the fishing tools, again, which is another group of Simple farm tools, which include the gods, the local pots, the spares, the fish traps, the fish nets as well. We also have the poultry tools, which include the watering trough, the feeding troughs, the battery cage, to mention a few. Still on the groups of simple farm tools, we have what is called the dairy tools that has to do with um, milk production. Here we have the buckets the milking machine, detergent, to mention a few. We also have the accessory tools, which include the spanners, the screwdrivers, the pliers, the chisels, just to mention a few. We also have surveying tools, which include the leveling stuff, the measuring tape, the pegs, the gunter's chain, ranging pole, just to mention a few. So as we go along, we'll get to understand better about these various groups of simple farm tools. So starting with garden tools, we have um, the hoe, which is an example of a garden tool. So we're going to look at the uses of the hoe. So the hoe is used for land preparation. Now as a farmer, one of the farming activities that are carried on the land on the, in cost of raising grain crop is land preparation. You need to prepare the land so the hoe can be used for land preparation can be used for making ridges and heaps on which crops grow to ensure easy root penetration. 
It can also be used for planting or transplanting some crops. It can also be used for harvesting some crops as well and for weeding in order to control weeds on our farm. So these are the uses of the hoe. We have another garden tool, which is the cutting tool, is used, which is called the machets or the cutlasses. It's used for cutting down and clearing bushes and trees, which is also a pre-planting farming activity. You know, before you cultivate your crops, you need to clear the bush and before you carry out some land um, tillage activities, you need to clear the bush. You can use the machete, so it's used for cutting down and clearing bushes and trees. It can also be used for transplanting seedlings, you know, into the, from the nursery into the main field, so the machete can be used. It can also be used for planting seeds directly on the field. It can also be used for harvesting crops once the crops are matured and you need to harvest. The machete can be used for harvesting crops. And it can also be used for weeding the farm as a means of controlling weeds. We have the spade as another garden tool, which is used for digging drains, also laying foundations and trenches on our farms. It can also be used for turning the soil, which is also a tillage um, activity. It can be used for turning the soil and can also be used for leveling the soil. We have the spade. You can see I talked about the shovel, which has a, an oval shape, the blade, but the spade here has a rectangular shape. It's also used for digging holes, which is used for planting or for transplanting from the nursery to the main field. It can also be used for mixing cement or concrete. For example, you want to actually build some farm structures or farm buildings which involve cement. So you need to make use, you can make use of the shovel or the spade in this case to mix your cement with sand in order to build your farm structures. We also have the shovel, continuing still on shovel. It can be used for packing manure. It can be used for lifting or transferring soil from one place to the other, also for digging holes and also leveling the ground. So you can see the picture showing this, the effective use of the shovel. Can also be used for making mounds or ridges on which crops can be planted and grow to ensure easy root penetration. It can also be used for loading materials from ground level into the wheelbarrow. We'll talk about the wheelbarrow with time. It can also be used for that purpose and also for making garden paths. We have the hand trowel as another garden tool. Now the hand trowel is used for transplanting seedlings from the nursery to the main field and it can also be used for fertilizer or manure application which will help our crops to grow effect well. It can also be used for light weeding as a means of weed control. You can make use of the hand trowel to control weeds. So we can also use it for digging holes for planting directly on the field. Remember I talked about transplanting, that is from the nursery to the field. Can also use the hand trowel for digging holes, for planting uh, seeds directly in the field. It can also be used for sampling soil. You want to check the type of soil that is on your farm. You can use the hand trowel to sample your soil. And it can also be used for mixing soil and fertilizers that have been applied to the field, to your crops. You know, you need to mix it up with the soil around the plant. So you can use the hand trowel for mixing soil and fertilizers. We have the hand fork as another garden tool. Now what's the purpose or what are the uses of the hand, the hand fork? The hand fork is used for loosening the surface of our soil, especially when the soil is compact or compacted. They can see the picture there. The, the farmer is using the hand fork to loosen up the soil can also be used for light weeding, that's for weed control, getting rid of unwanted plants or grasses in the field, and also for mixing small quantity of soil or manure as well. And can also be used to spread manure as well. We have the garden fork, which is like a bigger version of the hand fork. Now this is used for turning manure during compost making. 
Now, compost making has to do with the rotting down of some plant residue and animal residue, you know, in a pit. So when you need to turn that compost after two weeks, you know, so this can be used to, uh, to enable you achieve that purpose. It can also be used for loosening the soil before transplanting your um, seedlings from your nursery to the main field. And it can also be used for loading manure as well and spreading the manure and also for loading hay as well. Hay, which is a form of dry grass on the field, can be used for loading hay. Now, it can also be used, uh, sorry, we're talking about rakes now, which is another garden tool. What is the rake used for? It's, it can be used for clearing debris or trash. So debris are some unwanted materials which can be seen on your field. It can be used, the, the rake is an effective tool that can be used to clear debris or trash from your field or from your farm can also be used for leveling soil surface. The soil surface can be leveled in order to enhance um, easy cultivation of our crops. It can also be used for removing stones. You can see the picture of the farmer making use of the rake there to get rid of stones. can also be used for weeding or uprooting plants from our seed beds. Still on the rake can be used for covering vegetable seeds when they are broadcast. Broadcast means your, your, especially in the nursery beds, you can spread your seed, vegetable seeds, and you need to, it to spread properly. And after that, you need to cover it with some soil. You can use the rake to achieve that. And it can also be used for breaking up some soil lumps into finer particles that would now call what we call secondary tillage, a secondary tillage practice. You know, we have the primary tillage, which is breaking up the soil into large clods. Then you can also break it up into smaller, tinier particles, which is secondary tillage practice, and the rake can be used to achieve that. We have the shares, which is another garden tool, which is actually a cutting tool, and is used for trimming our flowers, or flower hedges and shrubs. The picture can give you an idea of what I'm talking about and can also be used for cutting flowers as well. We have the watering can, and from the name water, which is there, you should know that it should be used for applying water, or which is also called irrigation. So the watering can can be used for light irrigation, like application of water to our crops during the dry season. It can also be used for the application of liquid fertilizers, which is called fertigation. And it can also be used for the application of water to the seedlings in our nurseries. You know, some plants are delicate, so they need to be grown in the nursery first before being transplanted to the field. So while in the nursery, you can make use of the watering can to apply water to the plant. We also have, um, it can also be used for watering cement block during construction of our farm house. Secretoire. This is another garden tool. So the secretoire can be is a cutting tool and is used for pruning our shrubs or ornamental plants and also for some form of weeding. Now pruning has to do with reducing the vegetation of our crops or our plants. So this um, can be used to achieve that can also be used for trimming hedges or shrubs. Can also be used for cutting boards or skin and rootstock. That's in the form of um, grafting or budding, which is a means of propagation using vegetative materials like the stem or the board. So you can use the secretoire to achieve that purpose. We have the ax as another garden tool, which is used for felling trees. Now, you don't fall trees. Technically, it's called fell, you fell trees. So it's used for felling trees. And it's also used for splitting woods, as you can see in the picture there, also for cutting woods. It can also be used for pruning stumps, which are the leftover parts after a tree has been cut. The stump is what is remaining down in the soil. You can also use the axe to uproot it. 
and also can the axe can be used for cutting firewoods and logs as well. We have the pick's axe, which is also called the digger. And from the name, you can see it's used for digging. From the picture, you can see what they're doing with it. They're easy to dig. It can also be used for removing the removal of roots of trees, which is the stump. And it can also be used for tilling a very hard soil. So when the soil is very hard, you can actually use the digger or the pickaxe to till it. Tilling means breaking up the compact soil into clods or lumps. And it can also be used for tilling soil for erection of farm buildings and can also be used for making ridges as well. We have, still on the pickaxe, it can be used for digging and uprooting small stumps or well, trees that have been felled. The stones that are remaining back in the soil can be uprooted using the digger or the pickaxe. It can also be used for loosening stones, roots, and hard plants in the soil. And finally, it can be used for bush clearing. Let's look at the knapsack sprayer. The knapsack sprayer, which is also called the pneumatic sprayer, is another garden tool that is used to spray chemicals on our crops, which is a form of fumigation. So a pest control, so you can use it both for pest control and weed control. So you can see it can be used, the chemicals used could be fungicides, herbicides, pesticides, or liquid fertilizers, which has to do with uh, a, term, a term called fertigation when you apply liquid um, fertilizers using an irrigation system. So this is actually application of liquid fertilizers through a, a device. So we're talking about um, uses of knapsack sprayer. So we have they use, is used for what? To spray chemicals on our crops. So we have deeper as another garden tool. Now what's deeper used for? It's used for making seed holes. Before you cultivate or plant your seed, you need to make holes to put the seed and cover the seeds. So the deeper is effectively used for that purpose and it can also be used for sowing large seeds. Let's look at harvesting tools as another simple farm tool, or group of simple farm tools, starting with the go to hell, which is a harvesting tool and is used for harvesting tree crops. You know, tree crops are usually, the heights are usually tall, higher than the hands can reach. So you have to, you can make use of this simple farm tool called go to hell to harvest some of our tree crops like cocoa, mango, orange, purple, etc. We have um, sickle as another harvesting tool and this is used for harvesting cereal, cereal crops like rice, wheat and millet. So you can see the farmer in the picture effectively using it to harvest rice. It can also be used for cutting forage for our livestock. Forage has to do with um, crops that are fed used to feed our livestock, you know, vegetative, vegetative parts of our plants, given to livestock for their food. So you need to, you can use the sickle to cut the forage and give it to our livestock. It can also be used for light weeding of our vegetable plants. The hoe is another harvesting tool, which can be used for land preparation, can be used for making ridges and heaps, can also be used for planting or transplanting some crops harvesting of our crops and also for weeding. You can see the farmer effectively using the hoe in the picture to carry out weeding activities. So it can be used for making ridges, which is also known as heaps as well. Can be used, that is for planting our crops to ensure easy penetration of the roots, for transplanting as well, and as I said, for harvesting and for weeding. We have the harvesting knife which can be used for harvesting some crops like cocoa, oil palm, mango, and orange. I talked about the go to hell, which is used for harvesting tall um, fruits from tree crops. This can also be used in that for that purpose, and it can also be used for light pruning as well. And pruning has to do with reducing the vegetation of our plants. <coughs> so we have cutlass. This is another harvesting tool and the cutlass is used for cutting down trees, clearing bushes and for transplanting seedlings, for planting seeds as well, harvesting our crops and also for weeding. 
So the cutlass is also a harvesting tool. I spoke about them as guarding tools, but they also fall under this group as harvesting tools. We have the head pan as a harvesting tool. So it can be used for carrying our farm produce. Once you harvest the farm produce, you can use the head pan to carry it. That picture of it, the picture of the woman showing her, it is used. It can also be used for transplanting seedlings. For example, the seedlings, which are young plants that have been grown in a nursery, in seedling bags, can be put into this head pan and take it to the main field for cultivation or transplanting. Then we also have, it can be used for carrying and mixing manure or fertilizers as well. And also for carrying farm inputs and outputs. So these are the uses of the head pan, which is the harvesting tool. And it's, we have the basket as another harvesting tool. And what's the basket used for? It can be used for car um, carrying or harvested farm produce. The picture shows you of a farmer harvesting his vegetables and he's making use of a basket to carry the harvested farm produce. We have the wheelbarrow as a harvesting tool. You can see it's used for carrying farm inputs as well and also carrying farm outputs. The picture shows you of the farmer carrying some seedlings. We're using the wheelbarrow, which is a farm input. Then it can also be used for carrying loads of materials to the market as well. Let's look at fishing tools, which is another group of simple farm tools. Now, fishing tools here, we have the hook and line, which is a fishing tool, and is used for partial harvesting of our fish, not total harvesting. The, fish, the hook and line is used for partial harvesting of fish. The guard is another fishing tool. So you can see the guard in the picture. It's actually a Rugungu fishing festival which takes place in the northern part of Nigeria and is used for partial harvesting of fish as well. We have the local pot which is also used as well for partial harvesting of fish. We have the spear which is another fishing tool. From the picture you can see how the fisherman is making use of the spear. It's also used for partial harvesting of fish. We have fish trap. You can see from the picture how the fish trap is used. It's used for, also used for partial harvesting of fish. We have the scoop net. This is also a fishing tool which is used for partial harvesting of fish. You can see the, the fisherman making use of the scoop net to harvest fish. We have the gill net, you know, part of the fish, the, the morphology of the fish. We have um, the, the gills which um, is what will get this fish to be trapped in the net because of the spaces between the, the mesh size is, is such a way that by the time the fish tries to pass through, it gets stuck because the gills will get hooked into the net. That's why it's called the gill net. So it's also used for partial harvesting of fish. We have the sign net as well which is um, also a type of net used for harvesting fish. You can see the picture of how a signing net looks. We have the cast net. This is also another type of net that is used for partial harvesting of fish as well. We have the drag net. From the picture, you're able to see the differences between the scoop net, the signing net, the gill net, and we have the drag net. You can see how it looks like. It's also used for partial harvesting of fish. We have the fishing basket, which is also used for partial harvesting of fish. So these are some of the fishing tools mentioned. Now let's look at poultry tools. This is another group of simple farm tools. And poultry has to do with birds, domestic birds. And one of the poultry tools here is the watering trough. It's used for um, administering water to our poultry birds. So it contains drinking water for the poultry birds. We have the feeding trough, which is used for feeding our poultry birds. We have the brooder, the lantern, the stove, the hurricane. They are all called the same because they call the brooder, the lantern, stove, hurricane. They help to keep our chicks warm. You know, chicks are born naked, and so when they are in the farm, you need to put them in a brooder house. You need to keep them 
brew them by keeping them warm to ensure their survival into adult chicks. So that's another poultry tool, the brooder, or the lantern, the stove, or hurricane. We have the fold, which is used for housing our poultry birds. So the picture tells you how, or can show you how the fold looks like. We have the battery cage, which is another poultry tool, which is used for housing layers. You know, in poultry production, we have the broilers, and we have the layers, those are birds that lay eggs. So this is um, a modern um, tool, which is used for housing our battery and birds, which is called the battery cage. So it has tears, it has cells, and is able to house a number of birds. So it's also classified as a poultry tool. We have the beakers, which is used for reducing the length of the beak of our birds. So it's used for debeaking birds, and now the beaks of our birds to reduce cannibalism and egg um, um, feeding of our the birds on eggs, egg losses due to feeding of um, cracking of the eggs with the beaks of our birds, you know, to feed on the eggs. The birds do that. So the beaking helps to control that. So that's cutting the beak, the upper beak and the lower beak to help control, to prevent that sharp pointed tip that the beaks usually have. So this is also a poultry tool. We have incubator, incubator that's um, part of um, the hatchery where we're talking about providing this form of warmth to the eggs and eventually hatching them into chicks, that's fertile eggs, hatching them into chicks. So the incubator is also classified as a poultry tool. We have candlers, which is another hatching activity in order to detect unfertile eggs before putting them into the incubator. The candler is used, so that's another poultry tool. We have the bucket, which is used for fetching water because birds need water, so you can use buckets, the bucket to administer water to the watering trough of our poultry and birds. We have hypodermic, which is also the syringe or needle for injecting our birds. You know, due to vaccination or some certain treatments, the birds need to be injected, and this will be used. So this is another poultry tool. We have the nesting box. This is also for egg laying as regards um, layers. So this is um, how would I, this should be the previous type of the locally made type of um, nesting box that we have for layers as compared to the battery cage I showed you, which is a modern type of nesting box or modern type of um, production for our poultry birds. So you, if you compare the nesting box and the layers, you find out that in this case, the birds just come here to lay the eggs and they go back to the other part of the building, that's the pen. But in battery cage, the birds actually live there, feed there, and lay their eggs in the cage. So it's different from this. But this is also a poultry tool called a nesting box for just laying. The purpose is for the birds to go in there, lay eggs, and come back and continue feeding and moving about in the pen. So this is another poultry tool. It's used in layer production. That's grain of layers, grain of layers. So we have dairy tools. This is another group of farm tools. And from the word dairy, this has to do with milk production. And here we have the milking machine, which is uh, one of the tools. We also have the bucket, also used in the, as a dairy tool. We have detergent and sponge, which is also used for milk production. Now let's look at workshop or accessory tools. Now we have some farm machines on our farm, and we have some structures and facilities that will need some of these accessory tools to actually help keep them in good, in a good state. So we have the hammer as a workshop or accessory tool. And what is the use of the hammer? It's for straightening damaged or bent components of our farm implements. So when our farm implements are damaged or bent at some part, you can actually make use of the hammer to, to straighten the damaged part of our farm implements or the bent components of our farm implements. It can also be used for driving nails into the wooden part 
of our farm. The ball end is for reverting, and the prong end is for removing nails from um, the wood. Especially when you're driving nails and you want to remove it, you can make use of the prong end. We have the mallet, which is another workshop tool or an accessory tool which is used for driving a chisel while cutting or shaping wood. We get to see how a chisel is. So the mallet can be used for driving a chisel while cutting or shaping wood and also for hammering materials that will be damaged if you make use of a metal hammer. So you can actually make use of a mallet to avoid damage. The pincers is used for removing nails from wood. You know, just like what the function of the prong does in the hammer. So the pincers can actually achieve that and also for gripping or cutting wire as well. The plier is also for gripping firmly wires and also for twisting wires. The plier can also be used for holding bolts and knots and also for cutting wires and cables. We have the screwdriver, which is another workshop tool from the word. The screwdriver is for driving screws in and into or out of wood, wooden or metal surfaces. Some are used to, that's those called testers can be used to detect or detect the presence of electric current. The hacksaw is used for cutting metal. The hacksaw can be used, it's an associate tool and is used for cutting metal. The file is used for sharpening blades of our farm tools and also for smoothening the rough edges of our farm implements. So I said it's for sharpening the blades of our farm tools and smoothening the rough surfaces of our farm implements. The spanner, we have the open-ended spanner. It's used for loosening knots or bolts of our farm machines and also for tightening knots of our farm machines. Now this is the chisel. Remember when I was talking about the mallet, I said the chisel is made use with the mallet. You know, so this is the chisel is used for creating holes in wood. A masculator is another workshop accessory and is used for castrating our farm animals, especially the males, which include the bull, the ram, and the goats. So this is um, a, the device or the accessory tool that is used for carrying out castration of our male anim farm animals. Budding is another accessory tool and it's uh, um, used to carry out vegetative propagation for budding and grafting in our tree crops like citrus or cocoa and rubber, which is vegetative propagation is an asexual means of propagating where you're propagating with the vegetative part of the plant, not the seed. You're not using the seed itself. You know, crops can be grown from the vegetative part of the plant as the stem, the leaves, and the roots. So the budding knife including the board, so the body knife is used for carrying out bodding, uh, which is a form of vegetative propagation. Now let's look at surveying tools. And here we're looking at surveying tools which has to do with mapping out of our farmland using some of these tools for identifying our structures and so on on our farmland. So this can be used for that, surveying tools. The first we have is leveling staff. So it's used to determine the differences in the height between points. We have the measuring tape, which is for measuring length or distance. We also have the pegs or arrow, which is used to indicate points and positions on the field or marked out stations. Okay, we also have the pegs, which is called the arrow, which is another surveying tool. So it can be used to indicate points and positions on the um, the field that has been surveyed or marked out for marking stations. So this is um, what the pegs or arrows are used for. Let's look at the general maintenance of our simple farm tools. Now these tools should be washed and dried after use. They should also be stored in a cool dry place and preferably you should return them to a toolbox after you've made use of them. And those that have metal parts or joints, you should apply grease to the metal parts or joints. And then make sure you do use the right tool for the right job. Don't use 
a tool that is not meant for the purpose for which it is meant for. So always use the right tool for the right job. And um, use skillfully according to instructions. So you must follow instructions of how to make use of these tools. You should also disinfect them after use. And if they have wooden handles, you should keep it away from termites. And those with cutting edges, you should sharpen regularly whenever they are blunt. Okay, let's have a recap of what we've learned so far. We talked about different types of farm tools which can be grouped into garden tools where we talked about cutting tools which involve cutlasses, secretoires, um, sickle. We also have digging tools. We have the carrying tools. We also have the harvesting tools which include go to hell, sickle, the harvesting knife. We also have the fishing tools which include the gourds, the local pots, the spare, the fish traps, and the nets, which different types of net, the sign net, the gills net, the scoop net. We also have the poultry tools, which include the watering troughs, the feeding troughs, the battery cages, the fold, the hypodermic. And we have the dairy tools, which include the bucket, the milking machines, and the detergent. We have the accessory tools, which include the spanners, the screwdrivers, the pliers, the chisel, the hammer, the mallet. And we have the surveying tools, which include the leveling staff, the measuring tape, the pegs, the ranging poles, the to mention a few. Let's go to exam guide and check out some questions. So the illustrated farm tool is used for, this has to, this is a hoe. A is used for making mounds, for transplanting seedlings, cutting trees, and pruning edges, hedges. The answer here is A for making mounds. Still on this implement, but another question, it says the farm implement that could perform a similar function as illustrated to this, and as the tool illustrated, is the reger. Remember, it's for making molds or ridges. I talked about that in the course of our discussion. So the answer here is C. Okay, this question says, what fishing gear is illustrated below? So the, there's a cast net, A, B, lift net, C, scoop net, D, trowel net. The answer is C, scoop. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It is a must-have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the video to people that would benefit from it.